Back to My Garden, Episode 39. Welcome to Back to My Garden. Discover your passion for gardening. Here's Dave Ledoux. What's the hottest trend in gardening? I think the hottest trend is aquaponics. Can you really grow a massive garden powered by fish? Find out more and discover the secrets to building fish-powered gardens at www.backtomygarden.com front slash fish. Attention gardeners, do you love perennial flowers? Get a free online catalog and 10% off your first order of bulbs at Bloom and Bulbs. I set up a link just for podcast listeners. Go to www.backtomygarden.com front slash bulb for your special bonus. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world when you listen to this. I'm Dave Ledoux, and welcome to another edition of Back to My Garden. And today, special episode, we're going all the way to the west coast of Canada. Leona is an enthusiastic gardener and backyard birder from beautiful Fraser Valley, British Columbia. She has a gorgeous blog with rich photography, like fairy garden pictorials and flower gardens with spirea, geranium, and fleabane. She's a blogger. She's active on social media. We'll share all those links in a minute. But first, let's welcome to the call Leona Schroeder. Leona, welcome to Back to My Garden. Thanks, David. It's good to be here. I gave you a little basic introduction, but I want to get to know your story, and our listeners want to get to know you too. Uh, Leona, take a minute or two and just share with us a little bit about your background and how did you get into gardening? Uh, yes, well, I've been gardening a long time, and my parents had a garden, and my grandmother had a huge garden, but I can't say that I was terribly interested in gardening back then. In fact, I can remember wondering why people like flowers so much, since I found them rather boring at the time. Uh, then one day, when I was in my late teens and I was bored, I picked up one of my parents' gardening catalogs, and I started to look through it, and it seemed pretty interesting to me, and I chose a few seeds that I thought I would try to grow that year, and uh, I've been hooked ever since. Very good. So, you saw it as a child, uh but you didn't really pick it up until late teens. That's fascinating. Mm-hmm. Do you remember what it was you grew? Um, I can only remember one thing, and it was a strange thing to grow. I grew peanuts. And they were not a success, but yes, I just thought it sounded interesting. So, Okay, so your first thing you grew wasn't a success, because some people are, you know, uh, beginner's luck. I love hearing yeah. the stories of the struggle sometimes. We really connect through mistakes in the garden. Uh, yeah, I'm sure I grew something else too, but I don't recall. Now, we have a lot of international listeners. What I'm going to do, a lot of people listening in their cars too, uh, keep both hands on the wheel. I'm going to have all of Leona's links on the blog. It'll be at backtomygarden.com, front slash 39. Leona's very active on Twitter. At Flower Sense. Now, let me spell that. It's a clever spelling. It's F L O W E R C E N T S. Gorgeous blog at www.flowersense.blogspot.ca. Flower Sense is with a C again. Wanted to ask you about your blog. How did you get into uh, garden blogging? Um, well, I enjoy taking pictures of my flowers, and I just thought it would be uh, interesting to share some of them. And my daughter had started a blog first, and I had seen hers, and it's on a totally different subject, but so I just thought I'd give it a shot. Have you found uh, readers from all over the place? Um, mostly from the U.S., I would say. Because mm-hmm. you have some flower photos that... Uh I'm more of a vegetable guy because I love the eating side of the equation, and I appreciate the gorgeous flowers, but fleabane was a new one on me. Uh, Mm -hmm. Geraniums, of course, spirea. Uh, What else have you put on your blog this season that is growing in your garden? Um, Well, I have some dahlias that I did recently. Um, I think I might have put a sunflower picture up. Oh, no, actually, maybe that's later this week. I don't know if I've done that yet. Tell me about your sunflower. I love them. Well, I'm growing some large ones this year, mostly for the birds, um, you know, for the seeds. And I have some daily daylilies and uh, daisies and some nigella. Beautiful. Butterfly. I have a butterfly bush. Now, the international people growing, where's Fraser Valley? If you're thinking about a map of Canada, 
You're on the West Coast, up where the mountains are. Vancouver, of course. People remember the Winter Olympics. You're about, what, an hour from Vancouver? Yes, I'm about an hour east from Vancouver. I explained to friends, like in England and over in Asia, BC is like our California. You get a much different climate than most of Canada. What's been your summer like for weather this year? Uh, it's a, been a very hot summer this year, actually, and it's been very dry, except for this week we finally got some rain. And how has that impacted your garden? Um, some of the things are a little bit struggling, you know, because, um, like, the tomatoes don't like it too hot, and I've had some issues with them. And uh, some of them, the leaves are turning a little brown early on our tree. But most of the things are quite well. I didn't know you had tomatoes. Tell me about your tomatoes. What, what kinds are you growing? Um, I'm just growing two kinds. I have a large planter box that's about six feet long, and I have one plant that's a grape tomato, and I have two plants that are the Manitoba type. Mm. Salads mostly, or do you do anything else with them? Um, yeah, for salads, and I also like to make salsa. Hey, me too. <laughs> this weekend we're doing salsa. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Hot or mild? Uh, mild, probably. Yeah, very good, good, good. Uh, a lot of listeners want to hear about uh, struggles and challenges in your garden. And when we think of BC, we often think you guys get a lot more rain than us and a lot more heat than us, than other parts of Canada. But you've had a dry summer. Mm-hmm. Has anything refused to grow this year? My rhubarb has really struggled with growing this year. It's been putting out lots of leaves, and I had some fresh rhubarb back in June before it got hot, but now most of the leaves have turned brown, and it's not a very happy camper. Mm. Do you make pies? Uh, I made pie, yes. Yeah, fantastic. For those of you listening, if you've never had rhubarb or strawberry rhubarb pie, it's absolutely one of my favorites. It's a great pie. Yes, it is. It's one of my favorites, too. Now, Leona, you have you picked up gardening in your teens and then into adulthood. Uh, today, what is gardening like for you? Do you do it for the beautiful flowers? Do you do it for the vegetables? Do you do it for the exercise or something deeper? Oh, well, there's a lot of reasons why I do it. Um, well, I love watching the plants come to life in the spring. Um, you know, I, it's great fun sowing lifeless little seeds and watching them sprout and grow into big, strong plants. And I love being outside in the backyard, listening to the birds sing and watching the bees buzz around my flowers. And It's just very peaceful. A lot of people love the nodding along and smiling. We have people listening stuck on rush hour traffic in the big cities listening to us talk right now. So it's very idyllic in British Columbia where you live. And... You know, some people are just gardening in pots on their patio and just dreaming about having a space like you do. Well, how big is your garden? Is it a backyard or is it a side lot? Uh, yeah, I live on a city-sized lot, so it's pretty typical size, so it's not too large. Mm-hmm. But we've rented for many years, so it's only been the last 11 years that we've had our own home, so I know what it's like to have to garden in pots. <laughs> nice. done a lot of that. Uh, uh, allotment gardening or community gardening is very popular now in in, in Ontario, in the UK. Uh, my friend Shelley is on the waiting list in Los Angeles. She's number 700 and something to get on the list to get a, a community plot. Oh, wow. So never take it for granted that we have some soil in our backyards. Mm-hmm. Very good. Uh, I want to talk to you about your garden this year. Did you try anything new that you've never tried before? Uh, what are you most proud of? Is anything exciting? Um, what kind of a season did you have, even with the climate change and the rough summer you've had? Um, well, something new that I grew this year was um, castor plants. I've uh, always thought they were interesting looking with the big, lush, tropical-looking leaves, and I don't have any small children, so I thought, you know, they're toxic plants, so you wouldn't want to grow them if you have little children around but i thought i could give it a go and they're quite large now and they look uh, very interesting do they have the long bean pods um not yet i don't think so Hmm. they have kind of strange pokey round 
circle things on them now, which I suppose might be flowers, but they don't look like your typical flowers. Did they grow from seeds? Yes. Fantastic. And about how tall are they? About five feet. Nice. <laughs> that, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. And the when, leaves are about well, about a foot across, so yeah, kind of like a maple shaped leaf. When do you actually get into fall weather? Then are you going to re- have to rip it out in September or later? Oh yeah, I'm sure it'll it'll die down when we get frost. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to picture your climate. Like you still have killing frosts up until probably March or April. Um, definitely in March we can. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes in April, but it's not common. But there's parts of BC that don't get the frost, right? No, I think all parts of BC get frost. Okay. It just depends on when or how much. I mean, even Vancouver. So you got the castor plants five feet tall. Anything else growing really crazy this year? Oh, well, I have a few sunflowers, and they just started blooming, and they're doing well. They're quite tall, too. And you grow those for the birds? Yes. Nice. Yep, and I have a butterfly bush that's done well this year. Describe that for our listeners. I'm not even that familiar with a butterfly bush. Um, well, it's a, it's a shrub, and it has kind of floppy, arching stems, and it grows about, well, mine grows about six to seven feet tall, and it has uh, purple flowers on it, kind of long flowers, and it's supposed to attract butterflies. And hummingbirds like it, too. I haven't seen any butterflies, but I have seen some hummingbirds around it. It has a lovely fragrance. I was going to ask you about that, because out here in central Canada, butterflies way down. Oh, yeah. For, I haven't seen very many in our town for, for years. I don't, yeah. And, and bees, too? Sorry. Um, no, I've seen a lot of bees, actually. Okay. I have lots of, um, I have some oregano in my garden, and they just seem to go crazy over that. Mm. And I have some catnip for my cat, and even though it's not a super attractive plant, the cat sure does love it, and the bees, too. You have catnip growing outside? I do. How do you keep it? Mine just, (laughs) we did it two seasons and it turned into a stick. I guess the neighborhood cats got at it. Yeah, well, the first time I attempted to grow it, and my cat kept sitting on it, and it died. And the second time I put it somewhere further away from the house, and the cat didn't discover it for a while, so it had a chance to get going. So now it, it comes back every year, so... And, and you're in a in a suburban city type backyard situation. Do you have any uh, pests or vermin? Uh yes, unfortunately. Um, I see the occasional rat, which I don't enjoy. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, typical aphids and whatnot. Yeah. They now is it ladybugs that eat aphids? Yes. Yeah. If we could only get the ladybugs to fly in when we need them, not when they're eating everything. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We had our first skunk in our garden this season. And, uh, mm. I, you know, what do skunks eat? But I think they were after the grubs in oh. uh, my neighbor's lawn. Mm-hmm. And it's all clay, of course, and nothing, you know, we're lucky anything will grow out here. Mm. Yeah, we have a lot of clay here too, actually. Very good. Um, Castor plants, bush, butterfly bush, uh, tomatoes, oregano. Am I missing anything? Um, I grow onions, potatoes, peas, cucumbers. It's all for vegetables, I guess. Very good. And then a lot of flowers, yep. We have a very similar backyard garden. Nice. Uh, do you let your onions go to seed, or do you just redo them every season? Um, I redo them every season. I buy. I don't grow them from seed. I buy the little sets, onion sets. Yeah. We did our first seeds, and uh, you know, it kind of looks like a big, uh, almost like a cactus on top of the onion, and uh, then mm-hmm. these little black seeds come out of it. And yeah. oh yeah, I'm learning yeah, how I've, to do all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've I've seen the onion flower. I've let them flower before. Yeah, sometimes you don't. You forget some of the onions, or you don't see them, and then they grow the next year, and then, yeah. I always love that the mystery plants. Like, what are you doing there? And uh, yeah, the free volunteers. Yeah, the free volunteers. Very good. 
Um, is there anything you want to grow next season, maybe as an experiment? Um, well, I'm hoping to rearrange one part of my garden to make room some, for some maybe uh, tall perennials. Like, I've always been interested in growing Joe pieweed, but it's kind of large, so I've never had room for it. Or maybe some milkweed to help entice some butterflies to my yard. Uh, wonderful. Yeah, we're going to do milkweed in the fall, I think, for the first time. Mm-hmm. Everyone's talking, oh, you got to grow milkweed, so we're going to give it a try. Mm-hmm. My, my poor wife, her allergies, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Her allergies seem to be really bad this year because of this. We've had the exact opposite weather as you guys. Mm, lots of rain, huh? It is so cold and so damp. Um, we're still waiting for summer to start, and it's near. You know, it's going to be winter before you know it. Mm. But that's part of gardening, right? Yes, it is. Very good. Have you ever had anything go terribly wrong in your garden that kind of you look back now and smile? Yeah, well, when we first moved into this house, there was a large rose bush here, and um, it just always had one problem after another, black spot, aphids, white fly. It was just, yes, a disaster. Did you do anything to fight them, or did you just surrender? Um, At first I did, but then I realized it just wasn't worth the stress, and I don't like to use chemicals and such, so I decided to get rid of it and replaced it with a different plant that was happier and easier to grow. Smart. Pick your battles. I think. Yes, exactly. (laughs) We garden for the the, uh, energy and the low drama, so if you're losing it, it's... The plants are amazingly resilient, aren't they? Mm Mm-hmm. Very good. Let's take a quick minute to thank our sponsors and then come back and play five quick questions. This episode of Back to My Garden sponsored by Coffee Royalty. Can you really lose 5, 10, even 20 pounds or more just by switching your coffee or tea? Find out how to drink it for free at www.backtomygarden.com front slash coffee. Are you concerned about toxic chemicals, GMOs, and frankenfood? Don't panic. Grow organic. Discover our new resource for organic gardening at www.backtomygarden.com front slash myorganic. Do you love homegrown tomatoes? A free report reveals the five dirt cheap tools I use to grow 22 types of heirloom tomatoes, including my secret soil booster. Download your copy for free today at www.backtomygarden.com front slash free report. Well, now is the time in the show when we get to play a game called Five Quick Questions. And this is a chance for you to share your wisdom and ideas and resources with beginners and novice gardeners. Are you ready to play? Sure. Number one, Leona, in your opinion, what do you think stops most people from trying their first garden? I think most people believe that gardening has to take a lot of time. So they just feel that they're too busy for it. And do you have any advice on how to make it less time intensive? Mm, Well, as far as weeding goes, putting down mulch makes an unbelievable difference in the amount of time you have to spend weeding. So mulch, yes. Mulch. (laughs) And more is always better when it comes to mulch, isn't it? Mm Mm-hmm. Number two, you've got two green thumbs. You've been gardening a while. You've had some good teachers. What's the best gardening advice that you've ever received? Um, Well, for me, it's pretty simple advice, really. It's just to be consistent with uh, watering your plants when it's dry out, or, you know, especially for your containers, because that's something that I struggle with, you know, remembering to water. Hmm. You struck a nerve. I uh, I had a tomato that had blossom end rot, mm-hmm. and I didn't know what it was. I'm I'm a beginner, and uh, it's because I was inconsistent in watering. Yeah, mine have had that too this year, more yeah. more than ever actually because of the heat. You know, we now again we have Americans, so I'm going to use Celsius and Fahrenheit. So 30 Celsius is about is it 88 or 87? This entire right. summer, we haven't been above 30. Mm-hmm. And you guys have had heat waves, especially back mm-hmm. in July, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's hard on the planet. Though then again, you think about Las Vegas or in the Phoenix, Arizona, and they're up in the hundreds. 
day after day. Yeah. They use ground cover. They use uh, covers, though, almost like a sunscreen for their plants. Mm-hmm. Well, I have a sister that lives in Texas, and she doesn't do a lot of gardening, but when she does, her whole season is shifted to gardening and harvesting in the spring, and then by the time summer comes, it's the garden's over pretty much. Yeah. Has she told you at all about their drought? Uh, I haven't talked to her recently, yeah, actually. They're, they're having a terribly dry year. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, question number three. This is where we recommend websites. I know you're a, a blogger. Can you recommend one or two good websites that you enjoy for gardeners, especially for uh, beginners? Um, well, one website that I would uh, share for, you know, just garden inspiration and good ideas is um, Glenda's uh, website at tootsietime.com. Tootsietime.com. Yeah, she lives uh, up in northern Alberta. Nice. And another site just that I would use for general gardening information is davesgarden.com. Yeah, I've heard of davesgarden.com. Isn't it amazing uh, how generous gardeners are with sharing ideas and wisdom? Yes, they are. It's, mm-hmm. I think back to, you know, I learned gardening as a child. My grandparents gardened. If you needed to know something, you had to go to the public library and dig through row after row of books. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now we could. Yeah, we have it so easy now. We do. Speaking of books, I love to read and a lot of listeners love gardening books. Can you recommend a good gardening book that you think we should read? Uh, well, my f- most used and favorite gardening book is uh, one in the expert series called The Flower Expert by D.J. Hassan. The Flower Expert by yes, D.J. Yes, there's a whole series of books called The Expert Series. There's like The Shrub Expert and The Vegetable Expert and so on. I can see when you have a big love affair with flowers, so that would be right in, right on your bookshelf. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's falling apart. Good, good, good. How do you like your flea bean this year? It's doing well this year. Yeah, the photos are spectacular. Mm, thank you. I know a lot of British people, and they go in uh, competitions and shows and stuff, and some people don't like to compete, but I'm always fascinated by how enormous flower gardening is. Mm-hmm. Uh, number five. This is a fun one, Leona. No pressure. Just blank out your mind. Picture a brand new baby rookie beginner gardener. What's the number one thing you think they should try to grow next year? Mm, I, I think that answer should be different for every person. Like, I think you should grow something that really excites you about gardening, you know? So you don't want to grow something just because your neighbor's growing it or because it's popular at the garden center, but something that you love. I love that. I also think we need to grow more plants and have smaller lawns. Ooh, that's good. little controversy, I know, especially in in heat-tolerant, you know, drought areas, getting Mm -hmm. rid of the lawns. Excellent, excellent. Um, Leona, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you what people in Fraser Valley love to garden and grow. When you go around and you see other people's gardens and you have you know, other gardeners, what are people growing in your part of the world that is uh, very interesting? Um, well, um, hydrangeas are very popular and uh, rhododendrons. I love them. And- Vegetable gardens are always popular. Good. Maple trees. Do you know what zone you are by any chance? Pardon me? Do you know what zone you are for a growing zone? Uh, uh, Supposedly in zone 8. So I've had my doubts about that. But yes, from my experience, you know, it's only the good years that I would say were 8. But if you have a bad year, I would put it in zone 7. Yeah, okay, uh, that's good stuff, because uh, people are in zonal denial sometimes, and they think, oh, yeah, I can grow a banana here or a pineapple, and no. But, uh, yeah, cast- people do actually grow bananas here. <laughs> well, not the banana plant, they don't get any fruit, but, right. but yes, they have to wrap them up and wrap them up well and insulate them to get them through the winter. Very good. Well, you grew castor plants for the first time. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> 
That's exciting. Um, do you have photos of him on your on your blog? Um, I I will. Okay. Yeah. By the time I was this airs. I on it yesterday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Because I know a lot of people would never grow them because they're toxic, but the, it's fascinating. It's kind of like dangerous gardening. Yeah, there's and there's a lot of information online about all the things that have been produced from them, like even um, motor oil for your car, like Castrol. Very cool. That's a see. Uh, there we go. That's a good place to to end it today. Um, all of Leona's links at her Twitter account at Flower Sense, and then her gorgeous blog at www.flowersense.blogspot.ca. I'm going to have it up on Back to My Garden. Leona, you've been a great guest on the show, but today I want you to have the last word to the listeners. Do you have a pearl of wisdom or a note of encouragement, especially for the nervous rookies out there as they begin their gardening journey? Um, well, I would just relax and, and not worry so much. Like if you see a little few bugs in your garden or something, not, not to panic and, you know, to let nature take its course and, and um, birds may come along and eat the bugs or you could even just rinse them off with your hose and, and just uh, enjoy it. Fantastic. Leona, thanks for being on Back to My Garden today. Thanks for having me, Dave. 